Okay, hi Platinum <laughs> Youth. Welcome to the surprise I was telling you about last week. We have a very special guest, the one, the only, Josh Fountain, all the way from sunny, beautiful Harvey Bay, Queensland. For those of you who don't know Josh Fountain, he is a world-class BMXer, a galaxy-class youth pastor, and a universal-class Christian father and friend. How's it going, Josh? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me, everybody. Great to be here with you guys all the way in Roma. Um, it's been a while since I've got to come out there and visit you in person, but what better of an opportunity to actually hang out with you guys today? I'm doing really well. I hope everybody is doing well as well. Excellent. It's a little well, we're, we're, we're smack in the middle of COVID self-isolation, and uh, we just we were chatting on the phone, what, last week, the week before? I can't remember, but we were just thinking about the opportunity we have to just share with each other here, and, and Josh happens to be a, an old friend of mine, and Jess's as well. And uh, if anyone's gone to Downpour Youth Camp, regional youth camp, then you would know Josh as well. He's the one who looks about as crazy as anybody, I think. He's got the tattoos. He's got the piercings. He, he <laughs> have long hair as well. I don't know what he's gone and done with his long hair, but uh, Josh is a good friend, and uh, we go back, go back a fair way. Hey, Josh, how, when, was, when was your first time at uh, Downpour Youth Camp? What year was that? I think it was the first year. So 2010 or 2011, yeah, um, about it. whichever the first year was, I can't really remember, but yeah, the very first one. So yeah, wow. pretty cool. That's really cool. And now you are, give us a quick rundown on where you are, what you're doing out at uh, Harvey Bay at the moment, up north in Harvey Bay, I could say from mm. where we are in Roma. What are you doing? Yeah. So, uh, me and the fam are uh, up here in Harvey Bay youth pastoring and uh, I'm also a school chappy at a Christian college here um, and we just felt God say move up there so and um, yeah start doing your thing up there so we've moved up here two years ago now um, we've been youth pastoring up here and, and a part of New Life Christian Church up here for that that amount of time and it's been really challenging really fun um, and a great experience so far so um, we also still run Cairo Ministries, which is the skate park ministry we do. At the moment, that's a little bit grounded considering all the skate parks are closed. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's, it's something still on our hearts as well as to minister into skate parks as well across Australia and wherever people will have us, to be honest. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, we're just going to delve into this really quickly. So skate park evangelism, that's kind of not a typical word used amongst the Christian circle, but this is something that's actually been really close to you. And it's actually been a lot, uh, a lot of your legacy and a lot of your story in this area too. You rode with JC epidemic, correct? For a number of years there. Yeah. I rode with JC from around 2010 until 2016 when they finished up. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the red frogs board riders in there as well. Um, doing skate park ministry all across Australia. And then um, 2016, we actually pioneered Cairo Ministries, which was a bit more of a hardcore evangelistical focus. Yeah, that's cool. So so just run this through, like with JC Epidemic and also with the Cairo, the idea is that you guys travel all over Australia, you rock up at a town, you go to the skate park or you go to an area, you set up some ramps and you just start doing some some hardcore stuff, backflips. You know, I don't know the names of the tricks, but I'm sorry. Uh, but you do some cool stuff, draw a crowd, tell them about Jesus, uh, show them a bit of love, teach them a little bit of, of, of the BMX side of things as well, those who are, who want to who want to ride with that. And uh, and yeah, and that's that's how it works, right? Like you're, you're just taking the, the word of, of Jesus and going into all the world and going to the skate parks and and teaching some of these guys a little bit of love. Is that is that correct? Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, a big part of it's just meeting people where they are. Um, and for me, the most natural and easiest place and one of the places I feel called to is skate parks and, and young people in skate parks because I grew up in them. I know what it's like. Um, you know, I've got my, my tribe of people that it's, it's easy for me to connect with and um, that I've got a lot of love for. So um, for me, it was a natural thing that when I became a Christian, um, I would express God's heart to these people um, through the way that I live and, and, and um, meeting people where they're at. So, yeah, a, a huge part of it is um, with JC was doing the shows um, and, and was um, turning up at, like, schools, wherever they'd have us, setting up these ramps, doing a crazy show and then sharing the gospel. Um, Cairo is a little more um, individually focused, if that makes sense. So generally with Cairo, we partner with youth groups only 
and churches only. And we run a day um, or a couple of days or we do youth camps. Um, and we spend a lot of time with the individuals um, in sharing God's love, God's mercy, whether it be extremely practical, um, but also through sharing, you know, our hearts and what God's done in our lives, um, listening to people, loving them, um, and giving them the time of day, really, uh, being a positive influence, sharing the love of Christ through showing it, you know, um, and then sharing the gospel through that as well. So, um, yeah, really focusing on local skate parks and particularly in regional communities is, is a large part of where our heart is with that too. Oh, that's cool. And, and for, this is really cool. What I love about, um, about your story and I love about your, your mission and your vision as well is the, the idea that you, you know, when we get so caught up, but especially modern day Christians and, and we, uh, that was a really, really loud car. Uh, we get caught up in this idea that if you want to be, you know, used by God and you want to be, you know, in the ministry as we like to use it, then you have to be in a church and you've got to be standing up on the, on the pulpit on a Sunday morning and, and preaching and stuff. And, and yet that's not actually what ministry is about. And that's even not what mm. we're called to do when Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. It, it was what I, what I love about yours and, and, and your story is that you go, you go where people need to be heard and, and you use the gift that God already gave you. I mean, I've seen you do some crazy stuff on that bike, man. Like that's uh, insanity. I, I saw you do like a, I don't know what it is, but you'd like bunny hopped straight from the ground off of a, off of a tree and then like back onto the ground. And like, I, I'm lucky to stay on a bike that's not moving uh, straight in a line and pedal at the same time. So you're really cool. And so a lot of the times in our life, you can, you can get caught up in going, I can't be used by God, but you're taking what God's given you and you're making a difference in what c could be considered a very abstract way, but that it's still really real. How, how does that, how did you come to that decision, that, that passion? Yeah, I, th I think um, there's multiple levels to that question. Fantastic question. Um, for me, part of it's stewarding the gifts that God's given me really well. There's a really that car in my end now. <laughs> Probably the same one. He was driving yeah, fast. They must be going fast. <laughs> um, for me, you know, it, it was also a matter of where's my, where's my realm of an area of influence? So, um, and what is in my hand? You know, what could I use? Like, what did I actually have yeah. that I could use instantly, you know? And, and for me, I didn't start out as a pastor. I didn't have a credential. I, I was barely in church when I started doing this stuff. And it all simply started with me taking free drinks down to a skate park on a Friday afternoon, every afternoon, every Friday, and just simply loving people there in my local community, you know, and it was, it was just a matter of God, you've put it on my heart to make a difference. I don't know everything. I don't understand everything, but what I did know and what I did understand is that I was different. I was changed and what God was doing in my heart had to be expressed. Wow. The love that God was pouring into me, was too big to contain in me. I had to show the world the difference, you know, and, and what he was doing in my life. So it was a very practical thing for me. It meant um, doing, you know, what I could, you know, God said, go out into the world and make disciples, preach the gospel, you know, but he also said that when I was sick and you looked after me, when I was um, in need of clothes and you clothed me, when I was in jail and you looked after me, when I was hungry and you fed me, um, you know, what you did for the least of these people in these sort of situations you did for me. And, and that's that, the, the parable of the sheep and the goats, how Jesus at the end time separates them. And, and there's people there and they're like, uh, Jesus says to them, Hey, when I was sick, you did feed me. When I was hungry, you fed me all that sort of stuff. And he goes through like this list, right? And they go, when did we do that? Like, when did we actually do that? And he goes, well, when you cared for those people, the least of these people, you actually did it for me. Wow. So reading that scripture, there's a deep seated conviction to be kind and to love people. Um, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So it was just an outworking of all of that um, for me and what God was doing in my heart that I couldn't contain what he was doing in me. And I didn't know how to make a difference. You know, I didn't... I wasn't terribly um, comfortable in a church setting, to be honest, when I first became a Christian again. And um, that wasn't my platform 
but I did have a platform. I was good at BMX. So, um, and being good at that meant that I could actually reach out to that community. I could feed the hungry at the skate park. I could love those at the skate park. I could give them the time of the day. I could be compassionate and I could show the love of Jesus there. And it was easy and it was fun. You know, um, I, th- I think sometimes we build up ministry to be something that, you know, we can't enjoy or, you know, it's got to be hard or laborious or intensive. And, and the truth is, yeah, you'll, you'll put energy into it. You'll put time into it. You'll work hard, but um, it's something you should love. And honestly, sometimes the most powerful ministries come out of you making a difference in the area that you love, that you're passionate about, that you enjoy. You know, um, people don't think they have an area they can influence. But my question back to them is, do you have something you love Yeah. that you're passionate about? Because if you have something you love and you're passionate about, you have a ministry, yeah. you have an area. So that's good. One of, one of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite movies is this, this line where he says, what man is a man who doesn't try and make the world a better place? And, and I, think, I think that, you know, take that and change it and you go, what, what Christian is a Christian who doesn't try and make their place of influence a better place? And I, yeah. I, love, I love that heart, man.